This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with Highlands United Methodist Church. My name is Brad Lorvik. I'm one of the ministers on staff, and it is a joy to be on this Lenten journey with you. We are preparing ourselves for Easter as we share in the communal prayer, grant us healing. We have a beautiful morning of worship ahead. I'm very grateful to share it with you and would love to share other moments with you as well. I invite you to join us on Tuesdays for the parents group, on Wednesdays for joys and concerns, for coffee hour after worship today. All of those Zoom links are on the church website. We would love to have you join us. I would also invite you, even though we may not all do it at the same moment, join us in the daily Lenten devotionals, an opportunity for us to connect and share together in meaning offered from folks within the congregation who have written these daily devotionals. You can find them on the church website. You can even sign up there to have them emailed to you every morning. These are the many ways that we continue to connect I invite you to keep an eye on the church website and your emails. As weather allows, we will begin some outdoor social distance gatherings in the weeks to come, probably Sunday afternoons when it's the warmest, and I look forward to being in the same place with you again. We have so many things to be grateful for as we journey together this Lenten season. Let us take a moment, center ourselves, be where we are, and be together in spirit as we light candles and continue in worship. Good morning. My name is Brandon Cawthon, and I'm the Director of Congregational Engagement, and welcome to church. Please join me in our call to worship. Come, join the Lenten journey. We hear the call to walk with Jesus. Come, hear the stories, listening to all the ways they can help us see our lives. For in the everyday nature of our lives, great meaning is present. And so we celebrate the gift of life, in the stories that we are helping to create. Please join me in our opening hymn. Miss Jenny, sure is good to see everybody. 
Well, I hope everybody's holding up okay during all this stay-at-home stuff and that the pandemic wall hasn't, hasn't hit you too hard. Miss Jenny, does your house have rules about where you can draw? Like with crayons and markers? Yes, we have a rule that we can only do that on paper. Yeah, my house too. I don't mean to tattle, but I saw Brad drawn where he wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> oh, really? Was he coloring on the sanctuary walls? Miss Jenny, he was drawing on people's foreheads. All sorts of black <laughs> smudges and stuff. Hmm, was this on Wednesday? Well, yeah. D did you see it too? <laughs> Pastor Brad was making crosses on people's foreheads for Ash Wednesday. It's a special exception to the only on paper rule. Hmm. Ash Wednesday? This week we began preparing for Easter. It's a season we call Lent. It begins with a day that we call Ash Wednesday because we use ashes to remember that we are human. Well, I know I'm a donkey and you're a person. <laughs> But what does ashes have to do with, with being human? Well, it actually applies to every living thing, donkeys included, included. Ashes remind us that our physical life is a special gift that doesn't last forever. That we came from the dust and ash, and someday we will all return to dust and ash. Oh, wow. That's real deep. Very circle of life. It's a circle of life. <laughs> Dwayne, I love your singing, but we can't afford the rights to that song. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, it really is a lot to think about. That our life on earth is, is only so long. It makes me appreciate it more. That's one of the things we want to remember during Lent. That life is precious and that God's love and grace help us get the most out of it. Well, I'm glad I get to share my life with you and the kids at home. It makes me feel like I matter. And I want to remind them that they matter too. Hey, friends at home, you all make life special. The world is better because you are here. I'm grateful for all the ways that you make a difference. You make a difference in me too. That makes my heart so happy, Dwayne. Can we pray about that? Oh, yes, please. Dear God. Dear God. We are grateful. We are grateful. That life is a gift. That life is a gift. Help each of us. Help each of us. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. May we also remind others. May we also remind others. That they matter to us. That they matter to us. And may I always remember. And may I always remember. That you love me. That you love me. Amen. Amen. And before we do the children's motto, I want to remind all of us, we will see each other again soon. Yes, we will. <laughs> In, in all, all that, that we think, think in, in all, all that, that we say, in, in all, all that, that we do, may, may we glorify you. As we come to a time of prayer, I want to again invite you to our joys and concerns time. It has been one of the highlights of this last year, spending time checking in with one another to hear how folks are doing. Please, it's 30 minutes. Make some time. Come join us. You are worth that effort and we would love to have you be a part of it. We also do enjoy hearing stories from home here in worship. Let's hear what's been hard and where folks are finding hope at home. What's been hard about COVID is pretty much the same, the lack of socialization and not being able to have friends over for dinner or go out to dinner with them, um, not, and not being able to see the grandkids. Um, the hopefuls have been, I learned the names of wildflowers this summer when I was hiking. Um, there haven't been any lift lines. I've been better at um, keeping in touch with family that's out of state, either through writing notes or phone calls. And um, I'm next in line for the COVID vaccine. Don't have much to add to that. Uh, the last few months have been sort of same old, same old. Uh, it has been the socialization that's uh, the lack of it that's been difficult and especially not seeing the grandkids. 
Uh, we're lucky to have both sets of grandkids near us, one in Boulder, one in Golden, but we've done a few drive-bys to say hi, uh, but that's been about it. Um, uh, positive, I have done more reading, which is something that I really enjoy, but don't allow myself to do enough of. And um, uh, staying in touch with family and friends, uh, more phone calls. And uh, I got lucky and I got the, the vaccine. I had the first dose a few weeks ago and I get the second dose in a couple of days. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy about that. Uh, it, it gives me a little sense of maybe a little more freedom, although my behavior is not gonna change much. And uh, I hope everybody else is having some luck finding uh, the vaccine. This looks to be a really slow, tough go, um, but hopefully that'll get better. And uh, look forward to seeing you at some point. I was gonna say, hopefully we'll all be able to see one another again soon. Thank you so much for sharing with us and helping us get a glimpse of how things are for y'all. Let's take a moment and continue in prayer. God, as we begin this Lenten journey, we ask for your companionship. Be with us. Let us not walk this road alone as individuals or even as a congregation that we might be in communion with you, that we might know your love and grace guiding us through a time of reflection and growth. For our prayer is simple. Grant us healing. And yet it is a, not simple at all. For the complexities of life that require healing seem monumental. But your grace, your grace is enough. Be with us, guide us, nurture and care for us, that we might then offer nurture and care for the world, seeking to live the life like Jesus did, just as we now join in the Lord's Prayer, sung together in call and response.
Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away, one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. As we begin our Lenten journey this year, I want to take a moment to check in. It has been a long year. Though we officially hit the one-year anniversary of worshiping remote in three weeks, it has really hit home for me this week that it has been a year. I mean, since y'all aren't in the sanctuary every week, I um, may have picked up a few bad housekeeping habits, like the pile of stoles that usually is laying behind the pulpit. As I have changed stoles throughout the many different seasons of the church here, when I'm done using one, it just gets added on top of the pile. And this week, when I went to the sacristy, the room where I keep the worship stuff, I I couldn't find my favorite purple stole there. That's because it was already in the pile. I'd already worn it during COVID. There at the bottom of the pile, like the deepest layer of a geological timeline, was my Lenten stole. We have been here before. We have been in Lent, in COVID, and that hit really hard. I knew the one-year mark was coming. I remember the dates really well, but this just felt different. I don't know. I, I'm in a weird space emotionally. I know we will see each other again soon. We have never been closer to getting to return together. In mere weeks, we will be able to gather outside in the warm afternoon sun for time together in person. Church members are receiving vaccines, and I am so grateful to know that more and more of our community has that extra safeguard for their health. All of that can be true, and I can still be sad and worn and weary. I miss you so much. 
I'm so grateful for the ways we connect and create community virtually, and I miss being in one another's presence. I feel like I hit that COVID wall more frequently than I used to, but I am still holding passionately to hope. Lent is a season of preparing for Easter. It's one of the more somber liturgical seasons. We don't sing Alleluia. People often give things up. It's an invitation to experience depth and even darkness before the light of Easter morning. After the year we've had, a lot of that feels repetitive. It has been an entire year of sacrifice. We have all given up so many different things. I mentioned in the Ash Wednesday service that these last 12 months have all felt very Lenten in their impact. So what are we to gain from a Lenten journey this year? For me, Lent has always been a time to focus on the life and ministry of Jesus, to hear and experience the scriptures of the gospel that we might get to know Jesus better. So I was very enthusiastic when our leadership team suggested a focus on healing during 2021. We as a group were talking about what we hoped this year would bring, and the word healing came up over and over. Healing. But it's not limited to the idea of getting physically better after an illness. It applies there, but not limited to that. Now that kind of healing certainly is something countless people need. A listen to any of our joys and concerns times reveals a litany of ailments and health concerns that we hold in our prayers for all sorts of people. But healing is not only for an infirm body. Healing can happen in our hearts and souls and relationship and society. In fact, the stories of Jesus reveal his intentional efforts to heal in all of those ways. Stories of Jesus miraculously curing illness are plentiful in the scriptures, and we will hear those stories. But we will also consider the ways Jesus brought healing beyond the body, the kind of healing we all need, healing I know I am desperate for. In our scripture today, we find Jesus boldly stepping into a situation rife with judgment and pain. A woman is about to receive the legal consequence for adultery. She is about to be stoned in the public square. It must be noted, um, her partner in the alleged activity receives no such consequence. Though the moment that instigated the punishment was a two-person activity, she tearfully awaits those stones alone. Her life has received scrutiny and judgment in ways that other people have not. Her private choices have become public discourse. All so that the religious leaders could publicly use her situation as a test for Jesus, trying to leverage his perceived compassion as an affront to the religious laws. But instead of harsh consequence, Jesus brings healing. His attempt at healing a broken system of judgment will not be fulfilled in this moment. He tries, but they don't get it. You see, he is seeking to heal the misapplication of God's law, calling the people back to relationship instead of just rules. You see, a small group of people had taken God's law and begun to use it for their power and privilege. This selfish use of this communal covenant was a sickness to the well-being of God's people. And just as this woman was encircled by a crowd looking to use punishment for their own power, Jesus knew he would share something in common with that woman very soon, being encircled by judgment and a system that wanted to destroy him. But Jesus is able to confront the brokenness of this moment, not by challenging the law as it was written, but by challenging the piety of those seeking to carry it out. His request is simple. If you carry no fault, if you are without sin, go ahead. Carry out these rules without compassion. But he knows they cannot, for he knows they are imperfect too. Because Jesus knows the human condition. 
Jesus knows that each and every one of those gathered carry their own failures and hold in their hearts their own shortcomings. Now, there has long been speculation about what Jesus was writing in the sand, but it doesn't even matter. Jesus' question is rather simple. Are you without fault or failure? In his challenge to those wielding God's law as a weapon, Jesus was asking them to take the first step in healing because he was asking them to acknowledge where they were broken. You cannot heal when you haven't acknowledged you need it. And so we too are asked to consider our lives. It is one of the defining aspects of Ash Wednesday to consider our imperfections and our need for grace and forgiveness. If we are honest in our reflection and honest about our need for healing, we can be changed. But for many, finding places of failure is not a challenge. For so many people, the call to self-reflection is repetitive because too many people, as a result of their own self-criticism or the byproduct of a judgmental and critical world, already know the places of pain that they carry. Which is where we find Jesus healing in his interactions with the woman in today's scripture. What we find in our scripture is a story of validation and companionship. I wonder what the few hours or days before this moment had been like for this woman, abandoned by the person she shared intimacy with, judged by those in power, Placed publicly for humiliation and consequence, she had been surrounded by people and yet was completely alone. And Jesus stepped into that space. Jesus looked at her and said, I see you, not just your actions or these accusations. Now, yes, the scripture also contains an invitation for growth and change. But none of us can make such turns in life without first finding the stability of validation. This is a sacred and holy thing. This is a deep human need. This is a place we can all find healing. For we find it when we are seen and validated for who we are. How powerful is it to know that we are known This is the grace of God made real in Jesus. When we talk about God meeting us where we are and loving us, this is just that. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the judgments others might cast, whatever our own disappointment in ourselves, God sees us and chooses to be with us. May that be a healing truth for you. And in our pursuit to live like Jesus, we are invited to set aside judgment of others and be a validating presence of companionship, that we might be a source of healing for others. And so when I invite you to receive this story of Jesus as an invitation, you are invited into the graceful validation of God's love to be seen and known you are invited to extend that grace, to honor the humanity of others in ways that create space for relationship, that such validating companionship received and shared might, as we pray, grant us healing. Amen. We continue to do great things here at Highlands because of your generosity. Please join me in our offertory prayer. In response to the love you have given us, God, we offer here what we have, what we do, and even more who we are, that our generosity might transform the world. Amen. Oh,
Amen. Please join me in our sending prayer. God of life, we seek your help on our Lenten journey. We seek to know life in a deeper, more meaningful way. As we hear the stories of Jesus, may we find a place of connection and understanding. In his life, may we encounter love, acceptance, justice, and hope in ways that shape our journeys and bring us healing. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn. don't even know how much we don't know. Our systems and institutions have failed to really give us exposure to the true stories of people of color. Be an active learner. Podcasts, creators of color here on TikTok, books, anything you can find. Make sure you are learning. You are beautiful inside and out. When you don't feel it, let me banish all your doubt. When you can't see it, may these simple words make do. All the world needs is for you to be you.